In today's Python for Beginners tutorial, we're going to be looking at the difference between tuples, lists, and dictionaries. Now, these are ways of storing a collection of data in Python. They all have their pros, they all have their cons. We're going to explain each one in turn in today's tutorial. Before we dive right into the terminal and start writing some code, let's just talk about each one. Now, a list is what it sounds like. It is a list of data and that data is indexed from zero to one. So you would have like a key and a value, key value pair, where the key is a numeric number from zero and the value is obviously the value in the list that you wish to store. Now lists are changeable. You can create a list and you can add items to that list. You can also modify items in the list and remove items from the list. Therefore, lists are very useful to use when storing data that changes quite often. Tuples, on the other hand, are like lists. However, you just can't change the data, the values in the tuple. Once you've defined them, you cannot change them. So, for example, this is very handy if you're having a list of, say, uh, months of the year, because they don't change very often, obviously. Now, items stored in a tuple are very similar to items stored in a list in the sense that they are indexed by numbers. However, this differs from the dictionary because a dictionary is, it's basically what it sounds like. It is an index of words. So the index being the keys, they are not numeric. They are actually words, they're, they're text. So where we have key and value pair in the list and the tuples, they would have their indexes as numeric. Whereas in this case, you're actually putting in text. So you have a text for the key and then the value can be whatever it needs to be. This means that the items in the dictionary aren't really in any particular order. They're not ordered by numeric uh, numbers because they're not numbers. And so there is a, an element of flexibility in adding keys and values in a dictionary. So where would you have a list? Where would you have a tuple? And where would you have a dictionary? Because what's the point in having the three of them? Well, if you think about some things that just never change, so for example, the months of the year or the seasons or the names of certain events that happen during the year, like Christmas and, and Easter and all of that stuff, they don't change, right? So you could create a tuple of those events. So for example, you know that uh, Christmas is probably right at the end of the year. So that would have the highest number in its index and its value would be Christmas. And because it's a tuple, it means that you cannot change that in the application. It's not changeable. When you're using tuples, you are essentially saying that this variable cannot be changed. Once it's been set, it has been set. And that is laying down some rules for your application, which is a good thing. Lists, of course, can be modified and changed, and they are also indexed uh, from zero and then upwards. So you could have perhaps a list of names or a list of places and all of that kind of thing. So when you're building up a list, when you want to have a list that you can add to or remove from and have that in numeric uh, index, then use a list. A list is very good for those kind of things. And of course, dictionaries are indexed by text, as I've mentioned, and also they're not sorted in any particular order. So they're very good for things like configuration or anything that you want to add to your system and modify, but have a textual based way of getting hold of that piece of information from your variable. So let's go and dive into the terminal now and actually start building some of these things. So we're in the Python command line here and what we're going to do is first build a tuple. So let's just go and create ourselves a variable. We're just going to call this test1 and we're going to equal that to our tuple. Now you can do this in a couple of ways. A tuple could be in uh, brackets like so and then you would divide each one up each item you would have as uh, perhaps a string like this. So here we could have um, foo 
here we could have bar, here we could have the number of, um, of 3 and then 4 and then uh, 18, that kind of thing. Pressing enter, that means that we have now defined that tuple. So test one is a tuple where the first item has a value of foo, its index is zero, the second is bar, third is three, four, and then 18, and so forth. But as I said, these are indexed from zero. So that would be zero, one, two, three, and four. Because we've created a tuple, we can call methods on the tuple object and we can discover bits and pieces about the tuple that we've created. So for example, if I put in test one and then the method of count, this is going to count how many items have the value in this tuple. So for instance, if I was to put in bar here, we should get one, which is true. And also if I pressed up on here and put in foo, we should also have one. Why is that? Well, this is because it's saying that there is only one value of foo and there is only one value of bar in this tuple. Let's go and create a new tuple now and have multiple values which are the same. So for example, let's do test two. We're gonna equal this to another tuple. Now, before I do this though, I should mention that you don't have to use brackets. You don't have to open and close brackets when you're creating a tuple. However, it can be uh, easier to uh, just read that that is a tuple if you have brackets. If you don't have brackets, you can simply just uh, put in foo and then a comma and then bar and then let's do another bar. So another comma like so. So we have two here and then we had three. Uh, I'm not gonna copy all of this. Let's do 74 and uh, I'm gonna do another 74 and another 74 like so. Press enter. We've actually created ourselves a tuple, but it doesn't it doesn't often look like a tuple from, from first glance. And if I did test two and then do a count of bar like so, we should have two as the output because we have two values in this tuple set to bar. And if I was to do 74, that would come up as three. Notice that I've mixed both strings and integers, and of course you can mix other bits and pieces as well. Um, but what you can't do is you can't add things to the tuple once you've created it. So for example, if I did test two dot add, and I wanted to put in another 74, for instance, as uh, an integer, so, uh, 74 like so, press enter, we have this issue. It says a tuple object has no attribute of add. We cannot add items to the tuple because it is a tuple and by definition, you cannot change it once you've created it. Also, I mentioned that tuples are indexed numerically and we can find out the index of a particular value. So let's just do uh, index like this, index of 74, and then we have four. But as you've probably noticed, we actually have three values in this tuple set to 74. And the output here is four. So what does that mean? Well, when we're calling index, we're, we want to retrieve the index in which that value is found. And what it's doing is it's going through, it's iterating over the tuple. It's saying that that is at index zero, one, two, three, and then it's found the first 74, which is at index four, and therefore it's output as four. But just be aware that the values in your tuple aren't always unique. And therefore your indexes will be completely different, but the values will be the same. So here we have four. If I was to do that again, but instead of 74, I put in the string of foo, that should come out as zero as it has because that is the first index, which is zero. So that's tuples, it's, they're very straightforward. So let's focus on lists now. Lists, like I've mentioned, uh, can be seen uh, very similar to arrays in other languages like PHP or JavaScript or, or what have you, uh, because you can start them off as completely empty and then you can um, append or prepend things into 
that list or array of items. So for example, we can do test here. Uh, I'm going to do test three is equal to an empty list. Press enter and we can start adding things into this list. If I was to do test and then three dots and then tab a couple of times, we can see the the uh, methods available to us. So for instance, we can now do um, a append and that is going to have a value. Let's just have a put in a string of foo, press enter. So we've now appended that uh, value into the test three uh, list. And if I pressed up again, let's do bar. Let's do, uh, let's just put in one and then let's put in 10, like so. Like with the tuple example, we can actually add uh, items in this list that have already been added. So for instance, we can put in another 10. And uh, if we did a count of 10, we can see that we have two because we have two items in this list that have the value of 10. But how do you go about discovering the contents of this list? Well, just simply type it. So test three and then press enter. And here you can see that we have foo bar one and then two items of 10. Of course, we can reverse this list if we wish. We can do test three dot reverse like so. Now that isn't actually going to print anything out, but if we typed in test three again, then we have uh, what we had before, but in reverse. So we've actually flipped it around. So let's move on to the basics of using dictionaries. Now, remember, a dictionary is indexed by a word. And the last example with the lists, we started them using the uh, square brackets. With a dictionary, though, we use curly braces. So let's do test and four, and we're going to equal that to an empty set of curly braces like so. So that creates ourselves an empty dictionary. And of course, if we did test four and then dot and a couple of tabs, we can see all the methods that are available to us. And very similar to the list object, we have methods such as clear and copy and pop and so forth that allows us to manipulate the, the dictionary uh, that we've created. So let's go and add an item to this dictionary. To add an item, you need to remove the dot here and put in some square brackets. This is going to denote the index. And again, like I've mentioned before, the index is text-based, so put in some quotes. So let's go and add an index, and we're just going to have name. And then we're going to equal that to the value of Peter and then Fisher like so. Press enter and we've created our first item in the dictionary. Here we have the key, which is name, and we have the value, which is Peter Fisher. So we can actually retrieve the name if we did test four and then passed in uh, the name like so. If we put in the index, that will return the value of Peter Fisher. And of course, we can build this up. So for instance, here, we could set this to, I don't know, perhaps a uh, job. For instance, we're going to equal that to the string of web developer like so. Press enter. And then now we have uh, the, the job index. So if we did test four and then retrieve the job like so, that would return the string of web developer. One thing you can't do with a dictionary is you can't have two items that have the same index and value because the index has already been added. So let's say, for example, test four, let's have a job and let's set that to be, I don't know, mobile developer instead of web developer. If I was to set that, it has been set, but of course we haven't added anything to the dictionary. What we've done is we've overwritten the original value of job. So if I was to do test four and then retrieved that job index, like so, it is no longer web developer, it is now mobile developer. So just be cautious when you're setting these things that you're not overriding something that has been previously added to the dictionary. 
We're going to be tackling lists and tuples and dictionaries in far more detail uh, later on in this course when we start looping over all of these variables to pull out and remove and replace the values within it when we actually start building an application. But for now, though, I hope that has helped. And if it has, do let me know. If you've got any comments, questions or queries, of course, put them down in the comments section below. I'll be interested to hear your thoughts and also if you've got any suggestions for future tutorials as well. If you haven't done so already, please do subscribe because I have a tutorial like this and a web chat every week. Thanks ever so much for watching. Happy coding, everyone. I'll see you again soon. Cheers.